Okay, you. good. Watch that. <laughs> <laughs>
connections enabled to me to ask new questions about my work, and that's profound. So when I came here, I, I, within a week, I set up this rhythm where I hiked twice a day. And maybe what's surprising is me maintaining kind of a thread of it. Different people kind of are joining me on the afternoon walks, and um, it kind of becomes something that then different conversations happen. There's a lot of interesting things going on. The banana slugs are mating, and we've had a whole, a whole uh, uh, thread about that. I think for a really long time, I've just been wanting to feel inspired. <coughs> And, and that's what I, I'm getting out of this residency. I feel like, um, I feel like there's people who like to play together and there's people that don't. <laughs> and I think that one really great thing about everyone here is that they like to play together. And it's, uh, it's a really magical thing. So that's Scientific Delirium Madness. Um, last summer was our second summer. Uh, we're coming up uh, this summer, uh, artists arrive and scientists arrive next week. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background. Um, uh, back when I was in high school, I was one of those kids that had all kinds of friends. I had the, my greaser friends and my hippie friends and what were in my high school called the, my collegiate friends. And I loved them all and uh, did different things with all of them. And I had a New Year's Eve party where I invited them all <laughs> and because I, I all wanted them to know one another. And they all stood in their little groups and never talked to each other. And it was, it was one of the worst Chris, uh, New Year's Eve parties I've ever been to. And I was the host. Uh, but I feel like my whole life I've been trying to get people who talk different languages to talk to one another. So fast forward 40 years um, to the privilege of becoming the director of the Jurassic Resident Artist Program, a program that's been around for 36 years. Has anybody here been here? Been there? Um, were you there as a resident? I wish. Uh, <laughs> started 36 years ago by um, Carl Jurassi, who passed away at the age of 92 two years ago, one of the inventors of the birth control pill. His daughter was a poet and a writer and an artist, and she killed herself um, at the age of 28 in 1978. And in her memory, Carl and uh, his girlfriend, uh, who subsequently became his wife, Diane Middlebrook, the noted literary scholar, set up the place to nourish living artists um, in her memory. For the first four years, it was women artist only. Then Carl had a working cattle ranch, and they um, repurposed the buildings. So there's a fully sprung dance floor. We're one of a handful of residencies in the country with a fully sprung dance floor. We have a composer studio three visual arts and media art studios, and now six or seven spaces for poets, playwrights, and prose writers. So every month we have uh, 12, 11 or 12 um, artists, sometimes 13 because the choreographers can bring a dancer with them, um, who come and live there. We pick them up from the airport. They come from, over the years, 53 different countries and all 50 states. And uh, their only instruction is to be. We trust artists, we believe in artists, we uh, have no work product requirements, uh, we believe in the collegial process, so they all come and leave at the same time. And we know we've been successful when we bring a group of very disparate kinds of artists together and they start understanding how their creativity how they can learn, how a poet can learn from a dancer who can learn from a visual artist. Because as we get older, we all channel ourselves, right? And we're all birds of a feather, and we stick together. But this is a way for everybody to fly up on the mountain. Very isolated, 583 acres, a mixture of uh, redwood forest and coastal grasslands with five and a half miles of trails, and it's completely private. So the artist will never see anyone they don't know while they're there. 
So when I got there five years ago, getting to know Carl before he died, um, I loved the idea of being intentional about artists and scientists getting together because it had happened accidentally. Roald Hoffman, um, the um, Nobel laureate in chemistry, is a playwright and poet, and he'd been there several times. And Carl had started to write plays, and I thought, well, let's be more intentional. So I looked around for a partner, and the best partner in the world was right here in the Bay Area, Leonardo. And uh, I didn't know any of the board members of Leonardo, but I trotted this idea of what if we have artists and scientists live together for 30 days. And they jumped in, and we very quickly got a National Endowment for the Arts grant and found some other private donors, and as well as Jurassic uh, donors, and started putting this together. The first year we had over 275 applications. It's very popular, Jurassic, for next year total, including uh, for Scientific Lurie and Madness, we have 924 applications for 70 spots. So it's, uh, we get the most amazing artists from all over the world. So we invite them all. Um, the scientists have to have a foot solidly in art, and the artists have to have a foot solidly in science. And they come and they play. Um, tonight's big announcement, it's always good to have news uh, when you're doing a presentation, is we are announcing the group of scientists and artists that will be arriving uh, at the ranch, at the artist ranch next week. And I've got their bios and their names and a press release here um, that you can pick up um, at the end of the evening. We also, it's an unusual session in that we do invite the public. It's the one day of the year that we throw open our doors and we um, can invite 250 people. Uh, it's a three mile, one lane road, so the county gets a little annoyed if I have too much traffic on it. But um, we would invite you all to come up. It will sell out, it always sells out. I think we're pushing 200 um, already, but July 24th, Sunday from 10 to five, uh, all the, the residents will be doing presentations, readings. Uh, I don't even know what they're going to do yet. They may not even know what they're going to do that yet. We worked that out the first few weeks that they're in residence. Um, we've got some new partners recently. I'm very happy to have the National Academies of Keck Futures Initiatives, who has long, for a long time been in the business of cross-disciplinary work between scientists um, among one another and are also interested in the art science. So they've nominated a fellow who's going to come uh, and be part of, of Scientific Delirium Madness. Um, the selection process, um, we've got some of the top folks in the country who look at all the applicants that come in. Uh, Roger Molina, of course, from Leonardo, Gordon Knox from Arizona State, um, Tammy Spector from USF, and uh, Danielle's going to join us this year as one of our uh, people that is going to help us select the residents that come. Uh, but the whole idea is just to be and to explore the kinds of creativity that can happen. Um, interestingly enough, the, the seeds that are planted when folks are there, you never know when they're going to grow. They could be like cicadas and be under the ground for 17 years. And that has happened with our artists. Things are, happen years and years after their time. But just from that group that you saw here in this video, the um, Christine Lee is an industrial um, designer, uh, wood, uh, specializing in wood. And she is now working with the medical doctor that you saw, who teaches at Georgetown. Actually, her, her area of expertise is teaching diagnostics to physicians by observations of art. And she's written a lot about it. But the two of them got together, and they have now designed a prototype of a more humane hospital gown, which they are, are, pro are prototyping with the clinic at Georgetown University this summer, which I just think is terrific. Um, so they're working on, some, on things like that. I, I know the primatologist and the poet are working together on some things. Uh, the, the guy from Spain, Guillermo Munoz, uh, from the Pirates of Science. He, I think, has a partnership with everybody else that was there last summer. And then one of my personal favorites, Ethan Janney, you saw, didn't really talk about what he does, but he records bird songs, and he has a degree in um, composition and neuroscience, and he is breaking down bird songs, analyzing them, and comparing them to jazz riffs. It's really quite remarkable work. Um, I expect equally, 
high IQs uh, this summer. I always say the IQs are pretty high, but this the, the summers of uh, art, uh, of scientific delirium madness are especially high. So I'd invite you all to come, and I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, Piero, I, I give a lot of credit because he was my first, I think my second week on the job. I had lunch with you at, in Stanford, and he's the like hub that was all the spokes of all the wheels across the country. Um, we're now getting quite an international reputation. Um, I owe a lot to Piero and um, his uh, range of friends out there in the science art world. So that's scientific delirium madness.